from Loitering in Wonderland Studios. <laughs> Phoenix West. Hello citizens, welcome to Things That Will Burn Hell. I'm Phoenix West. Today's episode is, I think, my favorite chapter of the book. Because of all the cool pictures I got to put in there, which you probably saw. And it's a doozy. It's parental phrases. It is maybe the most sarcastic piece in the book. Where I tell you how to kill your children. Now I need to cut that out because it spoils it. And you'll see why it's so sarcastic now. Things that will burn in hell, number 92, parental phrases. Nothing is worse than being a kid and having no say-so. These are the four worst things you can hear from your parents when you're a child. All worse than just hearing the simple truth of, I don't love you, son. I never did. Because I said so. This one is inherently annoying because there's no arguing with it. There's no tactic for the kid to use to get around this. This is the equivalent of you asking if you can go somewhere and them hitting you with the binding sign of a book in the bridge of the nose. It's a brick wall. No rhyme or reason to their answer, just no. The fact that they're merely responding with no is the reason within itself, proving that in parenting you can divide by zero. Scientists are still studying this mystifying fact. If you could find a way around this answer when you were a kid, then you should enroll for law school. I'll tell you when you're older. You know damn well you'll never get that answer from them eight years later. You can wait and wait, but the day will never come. You'll find it out on your own, but by then it's too late and you've impregnated a fatty. Good job, parents. You bred a fatty lover. Shame on you. I'll give you something to cry about. This is the taunt and torture angle of parenting. This is usually followed by more crying, as if you didn't already have an excuse to cry for. This is a catch-22 argument. Either stop crying and lose the argument, or cry and get hit and have to cry more. It's a vicious cycle. Part 1. Ask your mother. Part 2. Ask your father. Part 3. I'm fucked. That's about it. You're fucked. Unless you just do it anyway and pretend one said yes, then they find out and then you're fucked. I've come up with a few ideas for parents too lazy to bother communicating with their children. First, have you ever wanted to go out drinking and do some lines with Skinny J in some men's room at a truck stop but couldn't get a babysitter? Well, I took the liberty of finding someone for you. This person comes highly recommended and will set your child straight. Allow me to introduce your new babysitter, TV. I'm not sure what his initials stand for, maybe like Tony Vincent or something, but he's the best babysitter around. He looks so friendly and inviting, doesn't he? Another scenario, don't feel like driving your child to the doctor after every single nick and bruise. For example, they've broke their arm falling off a swing set. Fucking baby, quit crying or I'll give you something to cry about. Why stop there? Give him or her something to cry about. Well, with these two household tools, you can avoid waiting in those long doctor lines for something that can be fixed in the comfort of your own home. Just draw a line above where the fracture took place and use these tools. Number one, a circular saw. Number two, a hot iron. Oh, what's this? Looks like UPS is at your house. Go ahead, open that package. Oh, what do we have here? Looks like baby be gone for terrible parents. Have fun. Let's open it up and see what's inside, shall we? Ooh, rubber gloves, so you don't get your hands messy with the deed of ridding your life of children. These are also so you can do the job easily. Just put on the glove, grab your infant's ankles, and thwack the head on the counter. Or you can dig deeper in the box. Oh look, a hammer, medicine for the children. Take one of these and hide the body in the morning. Apply directly to the affected area once every six seconds or until movement ceases. Repeat for additional children and your parental duties are over. What else is in this box? Why, it's a plastic bag. Inside it are instructions on how to use it. It says insert baby in the bag, and then insert the bag into your choice of the following. Number one, river. Number two, microwave. Number three, dumpster. Number four, just swing it and throw it at a wall. Or you can just tie the bag tightly closed and go watch TV for a while. I'm sure The Simpsons is on anyway. You love that show. We also got Drano in the box. One cap full and you're ready to go. Good to go out shopping or whatever freedom you need. Just get out of the house and live a little. Speaking of living a little, your child won't have long after sipping from this tasty beverage. Make it a game. See which kid can drink the most before getting dizzy. The winner gets to meet Jesus. We also have a brick. Two ways to do the deed here. Number one, apply to skull. Number two, tie to the infant's leg and go for a nice stroll on a bridge that overlooks water and just happen to trip and drop the child in the murky depths. If it looks like an accident, God won't judge you. And we also have some schematics on how to build a miniature coffin. These aren't the exact ones pictured here. You have to pay for that shit. Anyway, my point is, give your kids some damn attention and take two seconds to answer them. Otherwise, don't have kids. And now we're back, so now you see why it was so sarcastic and that I gave advice on how to murder your children. Because the whole point of that, obviously, if you read it, if you listened to it, if you watched it, was to murder your children because that's a good idea. The ending of Shutter Island, holy shit, that woman's a saint. A saint. Saving those children 
from having to live with Leonardo DiCaprio is a fucking blessing. And, and she is a saint. Thank you, Michelle Williams. Thank you. No, but if you can't fucking talk to your kids and parent them, and all you can do is shout out this stupid bullshit that you've been force fed your whole life. And just, how about this? Instead of screaming at your child to do what you tell them to do, sit down and go, why aren't you doing what I'm telling you to? Why, what's holding you up from listening to me? Actually listening to what the kid has to say for once in their fucking life. How about that? If you can't do that, don't have fucking kids. If you're just going to scream at them and hit them, don't have fucking kids. Don't, don't. Because the same people that do that will, will get really fucking irate if a policeman walked up to them when they're breaking law and screamed at them and slapped them. Get really fucking angry. I hate to say it, but the adult that got slapped by a cop would learn faster than the child would because it's a fucking child. It's a fucking child. It's not, it has no idea what's going on. It, it, this is all new to them. And the first thing they're going to get is, if I do anything out of line, I'm going to get screamed at and hit. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. The real advice should be, if this is how you treat your kids in real life, by screaming at them and hitting them, you fucking kill yourself. Smash yourself in the head with a brick. Throw yourself off a bridge. Put a plastic bag around your own face. This got really serious, didn't it? Am I hiding something from my childhood? I need to think about... Oh, go to liwstudios.com. Check out the videos. Check out the podcasts. And YouTube.com slash Lordy Wonderland. Uh, Lordy Wonderland at gmail.com. I can't... I think I even speak. I'm just going to go there. Patreon.com slash Lordy Wonderland Studios. <laughs> um, and... Oh, God. Um, oh, I... No... Uh, and until next time, in the meantime, I'm Phoenix West. I'll see my parents in hell. I'll see you in hell. Why did you do that to me? I'm a bitch. For the record, my parents didn't do anything to me. That was what's called a bit. They bit me. Oh, God. Oh, God. No, seriously, uh, the parents didn't, didn't do anything to me. Uh, that was just a little comedy routine. <laughs> they routinely bit me. Oh, God. <laughs>